සියලුම SLT Mobitel සේවාවන් My SLT app එක හරහා කරගන්න. සියලුම SLT Mobitel සේවාවන් My SLT app එක හරහා කරගන්න. Changing tides. Ronald Vikram Singh is sworn in as acting president, while Singapore confirms no request for asylum received after Gotabaya Rajapaksa's arrival at Changi on a private visit. All options. President resignation finally received. Legality verification underway. All party leaders to announce candidate for Prime Minister's position by 10 a.m. tomorrow. Stern measures. Colombo falls under curfew. Sri Lanka army authorized to use necessary force to prevent destruction of property and life. To restore peace, protesters eventually vacate key locations occupied since Saturday. All this and much more coming up tonight on First at Nine. This Thursday, the 14th of July, 2022. Now a life boy, come on, so bahavi ka come saare samga. Han kar karban rahitai. From Ada Derana. This is Ada Derana First at Nine. Live. From Studio 24 in Colombo. A warm welcome, bringing you news from across Sri Lanka and around the world tonight on Other Derana English News. I'm Indivari Amwatha. President Gotabe Rajapaksa submitted his letter of resignation to the Speaker of Parliament today in a backdrop where. Colombo has been imposed with curfew once again and the army given powers to use force where necessary where there is damage to property and uh, lives. Also in the news, Sri Lanka's president was allowed entry to Singapore on a private visit but there was no request for asylum. Singapore's foreign ministry confirmed issuing a statement today. President Rajapaksa landed at Singapore's Changi International Airport later this afternoon after departing the Valena International Airport in Mali on a Saudi plane. The Associated Press meanwhile reported citing unnamed Maldivian sources that President Gotabe Rajapaksa is headed to Saudi Arabia via Singapore. Upon news of President Gotabe Rajapaksa's arrival in the Maldivian capital Mali around 3 a.m. yesterday, a group of Sri Lankans living in the Maldives began protest, demanding that the president be sent back to Sri Lanka. Meanwhile, a Sri Lankan who was engaged in protest was arrested by the police in Mali last afternoon. The Maldivian police also took over Sri Lankan flags held by protesters into their custody. Foreign media later reported that the protester was granted conditional release after he was produced before the court today. Foreign media also reported that later in the night, security was beefed up at the Velana International Airport to facilitate President Gotabe Rajapaksa a safe departure to Singapore. The Maldivian President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli also landed at the Malay Airport last night after a visit in Saudi Arabia on Hajj pilgrimage. However, around 11 a.m. today, President Rajapaksa has departed the Maldives on Saudi Arabian Airlines flight SVA-788. AFP reported that a plane carrying Sri Lankan President, First Lady and their two bodyguards landed at Singapore's Changi Airport at 7.17 p.m. Singapore time, around 4.47 p.m. in Sri Lankan time. It was later reported that Sri Lanka's President was allowed to enter Singapore on a private visit as confirmed by Singapore's Foreign Ministry. In a media statement, the Singaporean Foreign Ministry confirmed that Gotabe Rajapaksa was allowed entry into Singapore, but he has not asked for asylum and neither has he been granted any asylum. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the city-state added that Singapore generally does not grant requests for asylum. From Singapore, President Gotabe Rajapaksa is expected to head for Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. Now, the Speaker's office said that they have received a letter of resignation from President Gotabe Rajapaksa. The office went on to say that a legality verification of the letter is currently underway. It is reported that the resignation letter is presently being authenticated as a mandatory procedure. Once confirmed, the Speaker is expected to officially make an announcement later tonight. President Rajapaksa was expected to submit his letter of resignation to the Speaker of Parliament, Mahindayapa Abewadana, after landing in Singapore today. 
although he earlier assured to submit his resignation before midnight yesterday. The protesters today vacated all buildings they occupied since Saturday after the Speaker of Parliament stated today that President Gotabe Rajapaksa will be considered to have vacated his position if a letter of resignation is not submitted. The Prime Minister's office in Colombo was last to be stormed by protesters and occupied by force in addition to the already held President's office, Presidential Secretariat and the Prime Minister's official residence. The Premier's office, another invaluable building of historic value, established in 1947, had sustained damages during yesterday's tensions. The protesters began demonstrations in front of the Premier's office in Colombo after he was appointed as acting president by President Gotabe Rajpaksa in his absence. As the protesters continued to occupy the premises, Sri Lanka Army requested them to relocate to the ground floor from the first floor of the building. A tense situation arose when the army tried to get the protesters to vacate the premises. The army thereafter vacated the Prime Minister's office as protesters refused to leave. The protesters were then seen once again moving into the first floor of the building. This morning too, protesters continued to remain at the President's house, Presidential Secretariat and Temple Trees the Prime Minister's official residence. However, the protesters announced later today that they would vacate the key locations held by them over the past five days. The announcement followed the Speaker's statement that if President Gotabe Rajapaksa does not submit his resignation letter, it would be considered that he has vacated his position and legal provisions would be sought for such a move. As such, the protesters vacated the President's house, Presidential Secretariat, the Temple Trees and the Prime Minister's office later today. By evening, the key locations were back in the authority of security forces personnel. Members of the armed forces and the police in terms of provisions vested in them by the constitution of Sri Lanka have been empowered to enforce law and order of the country and to maintain the same in order to protect um, people, the public property and the country at large at the expense of their own lives. Now in a statement Sri Lanka army said that they intend to um, In a statement, uh, Sri Lanka Army said that this has been practiced since the country became an independent state and a free nation through which the sovereignty of the nation and uh, a reputation of the country, freedom of expression and free movement of the public as enshrined in the constitution are upheld and exercised as it has been distinctly manifested in the most recent months during the series of public protests that began in May this year. It was also noted that it is worthwhile to mention that uh, except for a few negligible arguments, um, no major incidents of violence of considerable nature had occurred due to the enforcement of law and order to, uh, or breach of it during those mass protests, including the one on the 9th of July in Colombo Fort. The Chief of Defence Staff, Tri-Service Commanders and the Inspector General of Police uh, on three occasions publicly appeared to protesting groups to remain calm, safeguard state buildings and all property and earnestly urged the protesters to resolve the issues constitutionally within the um, exit of the President Gotabe Rajpaksa from the country. 
Now, former minister, uh, former Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa, former Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa, and former Finance Secretary S. R. Artigala pledged before Supreme Court not to leave the country until tomorrow. Former Central Bank Governor Ajit Nivad Kabral also pledged before Supreme Court that they will not fly out of the country and that if he does so, he would obtain approval of the Supreme Court. A motion was filed yesterday seeking an order prohibiting the former Prime Minister, the former Finance Minister and former Central Bank Governor and several others from leaving the country. The motion was submitted in relation to a fundamental rights petition filed by the former chairman of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, Chanda Jayaratna, requesting that an investigation be ordered against the individuals responsible for the current economic crisis. The UK Parliament's Liberal Democrat leader, Sir Ed Davey, has called on the British government to partner with international agencies to provide Sri Lanka with a complete economic and political solution and to help people in crisis. Speaking in the House of Commons, Davey suggested that the UK work towards a package with the IMF to support the Democrats in Sri Lanka and look into the possibility of issuing an international arrest warrant for President Gotabe Rajapaksa as part of a political package for Sri Lanka. This horrible, appalling situation for the people of Sri Lanka has been brought about by the corruption of the Rajapaksa government, their populist unfunded tax cuts, their skyrocketing defence expenditure, their draconian police powers and their cronyism corruption the like we've rarely ever seen. And therefore, can I urge the Minister to work with international partners for a full economic and political solution to support the uh, Democrats in Sri Lanka? Can we start with an economic package with the IMF and others so we can give immediate support? But can that be followed and included with, with a political package which includes an international arrest warrant for President Rajapaksa and his cronies? Can it also include a demand for political freedom, the respect of rights and human rights? rights of everyone on the island of Sri Lanka, including the Tamil and Muslim minorities. Ukraine's president also talks about Sri Lanka. Details after this break. Big Three. to the news. Party leaders of the opposition and independent parties who met in Colombo today said they will nominate a member of parliament for premiership tomorrow to Speaker Mahinde Appa Abhiwadana. Yesterday, acting president, Prime Minister Ranil Vikrama Singha, requested the speaker to nominate to premiership, a member acceptable to both the government and opposition parties. Last evening, party leaders met for a third time since the eruption of mass protests in Colombo on the 9th of July to discuss the current political situation of the country. Chaired by Speaker Mahinda Yapa Bevardhana, the meeting was also attended by the military commanders, including Chief of Defence Staff General Shavindra Silva and Inspector General of Police. Acting President Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singha was not present at the party leaders' meeting. It had been concluded at the party leaders' meeting that Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singha should resign from his position as soon as possible to resolve the current crisis in the country. Early on Monday, when the party leaders met for a second time after the 9th of July crisis, they agreed to convene Parliament tomorrow, the 15th of July. However, Speaker Mahinda Yapa Abe Vardana informed today that Parliament will not convene tomorrow and that Parliament should be convened three days after the resignation of President Gotabe Rajapaksa. Meanwhile, yesterday acting President Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singha informed the Speaker to nominate to Premiership a member acceptable to both the government and opposition parties. Following that, representatives of the opposition and independent parties held talks in Colombo on agreeing to a common nomination for the post of Prime Minister. Anura Kumara Disanayaka, JVP's led Jatika Janabala Vega, refrained from attending the meeting.
ඒ හිට උදේ 10ට අනිවාර්යෙන් රයිලි කොසිග මැතිතුමා ඉල්ලන අග්‍රාමාද්‍ය ධුරයට අදාළ වන නම අපි ඉදිරිපත් කරන්න බලාපොරොත්තු වෙනවා සර්වපාක්ෂික රජයක් කියන කාරණාවේ අපි දිගටම හිටියා ඒ කාරණාවට අපි සම්පූර්ණයෙන්ම එකඟයි ඒ නිසා තමයි එක් නමක් මේ සඳහා යෝජනා කරන්න අපි කවුරුත් එකඟ වුණා ආදට අග්‍රාමාත්‍ය ධුර සිට කවර යෝජනා වුණා යෝජනාව දැනට මෙතන සාකච්ඡා කළේ සජිත් ප්‍රේමදාස මැතිතුමාගේ නම ඉතින් මම හිතනවා ඒ නම පිළිබඳ අපේ පක්ෂ 10ත් එක කතා කරලා අපි ඉක්මනින් මේක තුමාට දැනුම් දෙනවා අපේ එකඟතාවය රනිල් වික්‍රමසිංහ මහතා වැඩ බලන ජනාධිපති ධූරයෙනුත් අගමැති ධූරයෙනුත් ඔටි වත් වෙන්න කියන එකයි එකම ඉල්ලීම සියලුම විපක්ෂයේ නායකයින් Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has meanwhile blamed Russia for causing unrest in Sri Lanka as well as around the world due to the blockage of food products during the invasion of Ukraine. Highlighting the crisis in Sri Lanka during a recent address at the Asian Leadership Conference in Seoul, President Zelensky said that one of the major tactics Russia has used in their invasion of Ukraine is the creation of an economic shock, adding that several countries experiencing food and fuel shortages due to the disruption of supply chain have benefited Russia's agenda. He further went on to say that the shocking food and fuel price hikes led to a social explosion and no one knows how it will end. The Supreme Court ordered the Attorney General to submit a proper fuel distribution mechanism for essential services today. The court issued this order today when two fundamental rights petitions filed by the Bar Association of Sri Lanka seeking an order urging the government to prepare a long-term and short-term program for the continuous supply of essential services including fuel, food, electricity and medicine. These petitions were sum summoned today before the three-member Supreme Court bench of Justices Vijit Malgoda, Mahinda Samayawardana and Arjuna Obesekra. The Attorney General submitted an affidavit of the, uh, to the Secretary to the Ministry of Power and Energy explaining the purchase and distribution of fuel. Details about the volumes of fuel to be purchased by the government, the payments made and the measures taken for the proper distribution were presented to the court through the affidavit. However, the President's counsel who appealed or rather appeared on behalf of the Sri Lanka Bar Association pointed out that arrangements made on the matter are unsatisfactory. Taking you to business news in Colombo's stock market, the bulls slipped back to red zone, snapping previously a three-day rally as the country has been severely hit by political uncertainty. Now, the index plunged over 100 points during the first half of the session and touched an intraday low of 7,260. However, investor sentiment improved towards the latter half of the day as protesters agreed to hand, hand over government properties showing signs of prevailing chaos easing. Index witnessed gradual recovery during the mid-session, yet closed lower at 7,318, losing 47 points. Turnover was also heavily impacted by the political unrest and recorded at 6,000 or rather 625.8 million rupees, which is below the year-to-date average turnover of 3.3 billion rupees. Food, beverage and tobacco and diversified financial sectors jointly contributed 46% to the total turnover. Despite the lackluster participation, foreign investors turned net buyers. With that, we wrap up tonight's edition of First at Nine on Other Than a 24. Have a pleasant evening. Good night.